it's checking in with Anthony and Glenn, teaching you to be the hotel you're that you wanna be. It's checking in with Anthony and Glenn. Anthony, how are you, man? What's your middle name? Uh, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Hi. What's, how are you? What's your middle name? Uh, I don't have one. Uh, I, I was too poor I knew, to have I, one. I, you beat me to it, I was going to say. <laughs> I, was too poor I knew to you came from a poor family, but not that poor. <laughs> What's up, Mr. Houseman? Happy New Year, Anthony. Happy New Year. It is January 2nd, right? As we were recording this, it is indeed January, January 2nd. 2nd. So, uh, how was your New Year? Uh, the New Year was uh, uneventful. It was okay. fine. Where were you at midnight? Where was I at midnight? I was in front of my computer. Doing what? I was watching uh, the Fish Show from Madison Square Garden and their annual New Year's gag. And this year was very special to me because um, instead of uh, sneaking away from the family, my, uh, my wife had a friend over. They were doing their thing. And my boys came over and we did the countdown together while watching the show from Madison Square Garden. And as a uh, guy that's been going to fish shows for 27 years, it was nice to have my boys have a little bit of uh, that moment with me to uh, bring in the new year. So people who have no idea who fish is or what fish is or what a fish is, tell me what a fish is. Uh, fish is a hippie jam band that I got into back in my college days. They were formed in 1983 in Vermont, and uh, they've gone on to uh, take over the United States as one of the biggest bands that no one's ever heard of. Right, and because I've heard of them through you and right. a couple other people, but I, they, I wouldn't know them if I fell over them. No, you probably. So uh, if they walked in right now, if they walked in, said, "Hi, Glenn, how are you?" Would you like piss yourself? Uh, no, because I'm not a teenage girl, but uh, I have. Are met you sure? <laughs> I have been accused of it a lot. <laughs> that's that's for sure. Um, but I will say, and just so you know, if you decide yeah. to be a teenage girl, I wouldn't judge you. Right? Thank you. I, no, I mean seriously, it's 2019 now, and we're in a, in a world of uh, of choices. And if that's how I want to identify, I should be allowed to identify Absolutely. in that way. Meanwhile, I'll be I, I'm identifying myself as an old 40 year old <laughs> something. <laughs> so all right, so so if they came in, you'd be cool. Yeah, no, I think I'd be pretty cool with that. I mean, honestly, I'm not, I don't really buy into the whole uh, celebrity thing, except for real celebrities like, like you. Like me? Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's when I'm really intimidated. That's when you get nervous. All right, that's right. But I think that, you know, um, being in the business that I've been in and interviewing people that have had achievements for many decades, I even started my career as a music and entertainment writer mm. and I uh, segued into a whole life of running a company that, that um, edited rap videos and stuff, which I think we've mm. talked about on the show mm. before. Um, so I've been around those people and I really just realized they're regular people now I happen to be incredibly impressed by their talent and I think that each individually are some of the most incredible musicians that I've ever heard in, in my entire life and their skills are unparalleled but it wouldn't make me be like wah wah, 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 wah you know right. but I'm not really sure I'd have anything to say to those the, people the only, th the only thing better than that sound coming out of your mouth was yeah. the way your face looked when you <laughs> made that sound I, mean, well, I, I wish everybody could see that yeah maybe we should add some video components to our podcast this year just so people can see that stuff but uh, you know Anthony it was a great time it was a lot of fun um, I went to two of the four shows that they had at Madison Square Garden uh, live, it was a really terrific experience overall. But I couldn't help but asking myself the entire holiday season, what is my friend Anthony Mercury up to right about now? So what'd you do? Well, we had a very quiet time. It was nice. We had um, really beautiful Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, family, friends. New Year's Eve is becoming a, a real uh, come as you are kind of event at my house. So right. all people that. Uh, don't have any place to go or just want to hang out in my house, come in. And we had about, I don't know, about 30 people. And it was really, really nice. And I took my favorite selfie ever with everybody, everybody with a big smile on their face. So it was a really nice way to uh, ring in the new year. And the day prior, we went to see yeah. Kevin Hart at the Borgata in Atlantic City. Oh, that's fun. And I uh, brought my uh, teenage daughters. And um, I never realized how inappropriate the Kevin Hart concert is or, or, or stand up is so I felt very weird when they started talking about women body parts or men oh, body parts God. and how they connect into each other that started getting me a little weirded out um, however um, the concert was good his, his warm up guys were good uh, one was really good uh, and Kevin I love Kevin I really, I'm a big Kevin Hart fan but he was a little tired I gotta be honest with you right. I'd say on a scale of 1 to 10 his concert was a 7 uh, and I think right. because I follow him on Instagram the guy's just so worn out that I felt that he was um, calling in a little bit, and that was disappointing, but still a big Kevin Hart fan. But when you're paying like 300 bucks a ticket, 
you know, you expect a little bit more than that because it's not a cheap night to go there, spend the, spend the night at the hotel, and with the tickets, it's, it's an expensive night. So, um, well, I, I'll but, recommend going so to see the uh, the fish shows because they were only like uh, eighty bucks a ticket. Yeah. Right, so um, and you was, get you get a full night's worth of music. They can yeah, play from I got one hour eight fifteen Hart. to nine thirty, and they come back on for like ten fifteen to midnight. So I got one hour of Kevin Hart, and a couple of bits he did, they were pretty pretty funny. But uh, so anyway, the good news is then I watched him on Instagram next morning, and he gave his um, crew, yeah, the guys that do all the stand up that warm up his act, and a couple other people, his trainer, and a couple other people. He gave them classic cars. Wow, all their dream classic cars. So he, they all went into a parking lot, and every one of them had their name on it, and. They they had their own little classic car, which was kind of cool. Yeah. He's just, and then he was working New Year's Eve. And he, I was like, man, I, I thought I worked a lot. That man makes me look like I do nothing. Well, that's not true. You bought me breakfast this morning. I Thank did. you. That was I really did. nice of you. I did. That's becoming a tradition. Uh, it really is. That, that I get there early. You break in on the breakfast. That's right. I, I, as I'm eating my breakfast, you order your breakfast. And then the check comes, and uh, I pay for it. Yeah. Well, you know what? Up until today, <laughs> I was like, hey, let me put in, let me no, put in. No, and, you, no, no. and you always give me these looks, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. I'm breakfast like, is I'm always my pleasure. You do all the technical stuff for the show. The last thing I do is buy you breakfast. I just show up and look pretty. Thank you. That's true. And uh, also, a nice, a nice little dig if you have any, if anyone has any issues of the show with the sound quality, they know to, to screw to yell at That's me right, now, and not you. I, I, I like that. Um, but overall, I, I thought the New Year's Eve holiday was just uh, the whole Christmas, New Year's thing. Thing was uh, great. It was great that you did so many things on Christmas Day. Um, you know, me, I'm not a Christian, so um, we do something a little bit different. I, I got to be honest. I want to open up with you here, Anthony. Uh, it was not a very good Christmas Day for me. A Jewish Christmas is usually filled with, um, you know, a great movie and Chinese food. Right. And there were no good movies to see, and the Chinese restaurant was too busy. So uh, for me, it was really a complete it was too busy. bust of a day. It was too busy? Oh, it was packed. Was it? Pat, oh God! All the Jews come out for Chinese food I know. on Christmas Day. My friend Mark Summers, my friend, he, he, yeah, he he, he, po- he posted something on Instagram. It had um, a big Merry Christmas and in, uh, in Chinese lettering because <laughs> he's Jewish. That's right. right. That's right. Uh, and for for those of you, folks, his, name, that, his name's actually Mark Berkowitz. Oh well, smart to change his name to. Uh, to well, to he Summers. actually changed his name during the forty four caliber killer days. Oh oh oh! I remember. I right. remember that. Yeah, right. his name was Mark Berkowitz, wasn't it? Uh, I know it was Berkowitz. I don't yeah. remember the first yeah. name. I, I feel like Sam. Sam? No, that, that was son, son of Sam. Sam. Sorry, I'm getting my uh, my early day serial killers. Uh, no, no, he's the same guy. It is. It's the same guy. So it was Sam Berkowitz, right? No, I don't think so. I don't. I, no, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm sure all of you that are I listening think to the show of right Sam, now, I think that no. his, his his little haunted person in his brain was Sam. I don't know. Oh, I don't know either. I don't remember. That was the 1970s. What the hell are we talking about today? Let's stop we're talking. talking we're, about no, we're. This I, crap. I'm actually loving that we're doing all of this because then we don't actually have to get any topics today, and we could fill up an entire show with just 2018. So 2018, great year. I I got to tell you, um, how did you feel that 2018 was for you personally? Not from a business standpoint, but from a personal achievement and growth standpoint. I thought 2018 was a very nice year from a standpoint of me getting back involved in my business. You right. know, I've been doing TV for so long and we're doing podcasts now and I'm, you know, I'm just doing a lot of things. And um, I've really concentrated on my business this year, my consulting business, RJL Hospitality. Yep. And it's really taken off and um, I, I've enjoyed it a lot. And, um, you know, my daughters are in college. It was uh, their first year of college. Uh, or, no, a, they were going into their uh, uh, second half of their first year of college. Right. Um, and um, my daughter, my uh, youngest daughter, is getting ready for college. And um, outside of breaking my ankle, I, um, it was a really good year. It was kind of a year where I got my equilibrium back. Uh, I didn't travel as much as I usually do. I usually travel a couple hundred thousand miles a year. Wow. And this year, maybe I traveled less than 100,000 miles. Um, So I didn't get my status on my airline, which is good or bad. Uh, But um, I felt like I just felt more normal and human than I have been um, because I've just been so crazy busy the last eight years. Um, So it's it's been a real good kind of uh year to focus on um 
my business, my family, and not be on the plane every five seconds. And that's uh, that's really great that you're able to reconnect with your family, especially as your teenagers are getting older and heading into college and, and right. doing all of that now. Yeah, and that's, that's interesting. My daughter right now is uh, at Hunter Mountain in a big house with all of her friends um, for two days on a ski vacation. Great. What could possibly go wrong? At 20 years old in, in a big house near Hunter Mountain. Did, did I tell you how happy I am to have sons as children? <laughs> <laughs> So it was good. I think uh, 2018 was a was a good year, and uh, 2019 um, hopefully uh, will be a good year as well. How was your 2018? Uh, I'm going to tell you all about my 2018, but before I do that, I want to thank our uh, our sponsor. So we're going to take a quick break and be right back after this message. Hey everybody, Glenn here. So listen to this. Cobblestone Hotels is celebrating their 10th anniversary, and man, have they accomplished a lot in the last decade. Already, they have more than 150 hotels throughout the United States, but they're in smaller and medium-sized markets. Those markets that the big franchise companies, they're underserving, they're overlooking, and in some cases, just ignoring. But Cobblestone is an expert in these markets. And their president and CEO, Brian Wagernees, listen, I've gotten to know him in the last 10 years, and he has worked every job possible, including being an owner and operator. I can personally vouch for how awesome this company is, how awesome he is as an individual, because he understands the importance of finding the right combination of hotel brand and franchise owner. He's also an incredibly dedicated professional. Whether it's a Cobblestone Hotel and Suites Main Street design, Borders Inn and Suites, or one of the newly acquired brands such as Boulders Inn and Suites, Key West Inns, Centerstone Inns and Suites, Cobblestone has brands that range from economy to upper mid-tier and one that's right for you. Quite simply, Cobblestone Hotels is the franchise for franchise owners. Patrick Mullenix, well, he's their cobble, he's Cobblestone's new president of franchise development. Give him a call or check out their website at cobblestonefranchising.com. But give Patrick a call. He's a great guy. I've known him for a really, really long time, too. You can find him at 920-216-0620. That's cobblestonefranchising.com. And tell him Glenn sent you. Okay, and we're back. Thanks so much to our great sponsors out there. Okay, Anthony. So you want to know how my 2018 Yeah, but I want to know the, the, like, overall, the summary. Don't give me the details. Because do we really care about the details of your life? Uh, no, now, you know what? Honestly, now you sound like my wife. This is great. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> this relationship's going Tell perfect. Tell me every little detail. I'm listening. Uh, every little detail. Well, I woke up on January 1st, 2018, and I said to myself, no. Um, overall, though, I think it was a, it was, it was a really good year. I've it was now, the year we got together. Yeah. As we are, yeah, and that's why it was so uh, amazing to me. If I recall the beginning of 2018, oh, Wow. I mean, this last year was pretty interesting in terms of our uh, relationship. I recall having you on as a guest on my No Vacancy podcast, and for some reason you enjoyed the conversation, and I'm like, I have to have you back on the show again. And you're like, sure, I'm free. Let's do it right now. (laughs) And you talked to me on your cell phone for like another 45 minutes, and we had a great time. And then I don't know what it was, a month or two later, you you said you were interested in maybe doing something, and then we started uh, doing practice shows together and figuring it all out until we finally got to release this Right at the time, we didn't know they were practice back shows. In, uh, no. <laughs> until, until we heard that. That's, that's <laughs> until, you were, until you heard that, we go, that's yeah. a bunch of shit. Yeah. Well, it, I don't think it was a bunch of, uh, of shit. And I think that this goes into um, each of our own personal evolutions. And when you think of the expectations you have for yourself and what you think you're going to achieve and then what the reality is to actually go ahead and achieve those things, I think that – I probably said to myself, maybe with a little bit of hubris, um, I've been doing this podcast thing for a while. Um, I've got the experience with it. We'll just jump right in. It's going to be amazing. But the fact is that when I interview you for my No Vacancy show, it's very different than creating a, uh, a partnership. And by partnership, I don't mean a business partnership. I mean a partnership on the uh, microphones, the balancing each other, the figuring out our strengths, um, our weaknesses, and, and how to create great content. And as we started to do those initial shows, it occurred to me that uh, we didn't really know each other that well. We didn't figure out each other's rhythms. We didn't understand what the next person was going to say. Now, this would be probably – I don't know the exact show number. This will be probably be number 37 or so. I feel like we know each other really well. 
right? And it took all of those practice shows in order to build up to that place, that episode one, where we could connect together in a more uh, meaningful way that the listeners are going to appreciate, as opposed to us just, uh, you know, jerking ourselves off thinking we were so awesome. <laughs> I you said that. It's too early in the morning for that word. Uh, but yeah. um, I think uh, we've learned, or at least I've learned, how to listen better and listen to you finish your conversation and really listen with the intent of understanding as opposed to just trying to outdo each other. Or, right. And also I was a little nervous uh, in the beginning and I don't get nervous, but I was a little nervous to disrespect you because I felt like it was kind of, even though it was our show, I felt like it was still your show. So I didn't want you to think that I was right. taking all the energy. And plus, you know, coming in and, and, and having my television show and having that, you know, in air quotes, celebrity thing is I didn't want to kind of come in and like say, like, well, well okay, here I am, right? It's like, who, the, who gives a shit who I am, right? It, it's it, like, this is about two guys that enjoy the hotel business, and let's talk about that. Well, so it took me a second to understand that. I'm one guy that gave a shit about it, and it's interesting that you should say that because I also had that coming into it with, oh, you know, I've got this opportunity. I'm working with this celebrity, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I didn't use air quotes on that because mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you are. I Every time I'm with you, people are coming up to you and talking to you and uh, not, not – talking to me uh they're always talking to you so like i understood keenly what i was getting into and it was really interesting to try to learn who you were give you your space not trying to so step what have on you your learned toes. in 2018 uh, one thing that surprised you about my personality that you may not have gotten from tv or from my interviews with you uh how you actually want the straight dope you don't just say that you want it mm -hmm. right because there's a lot of people that i know that would say be honest with me be honest with me, and then you're honest with them, and then they don't want you to be honest with them. Mm -hmm. You're very different that way. Well, you actually you. want to have that. You're a real, genuine person thank who you. wants to have a relationship with me that's on par without any well, ego. Well, thank you. And I know we we're, were talking about your 2018, but let, just let me say this, and I'll be remiss if I don't say it. It's like 2018. You know, I don't like partners. I have, a, I have, I have two business partners, and now I have a third business partner, which is you. And I don't, uh, before those two business partners and before you, I, I, I stayed away from business partners. I don't like business partners. Right. I'd rather give up uh, a business or give up a big percentage of my m money to not have a business partner. I hate business partners because I have a personality that's pretty difficult to work with sometimes. Uh, and it's been a pleasure to work with you and it's been a pleasure to be your partner. And it's been really just an honor to kind of get to know you and to really get your perspective on things. And I learn every single day. And I learn the one thing I learned a lot is I thought I was really good when it comes to vocabulary. And I thought I knew a lot of words until you start speaking to me. And then I'm sitting there going, I got to look that up. I got to look that up. I got to look that up. <laughs> so I, I've learned a lot. But also, you're just you're a kind person and you're a genuine person. And um, it's, a, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks so thanks so much. I, f I wish I had like some big fancy word to whip out right now to really Don't symbolize. Whip out. This really. <laughs> After all the talk I've been having, <laughs> you're following up with a, a lot a lot of explicit humor here uh, on today's show. But thank you. Yeah. I mean, it's really been it's really been great just getting to, to to know you. And again, I don't want this to sound like we're just kissing each other's ass for a half an hour here on, on this show. But really, getting to know you as a human being is really interesting. It mm -hmm. makes me think about all relationships that we have in our lives. Right? At what point? When you get to know somebody, does that veneer drop and they actually become a real person? Yeah. And that's right? been really difficult for me. It's like I hate and I underline hate that that veneer, that's a good word, uh, in between me as a human and me as a celebrity on TV. I literally like it's like when people approach me or people get to know me as a friend and they're waiting for something. They're either waiting for me to put on a cape, right? You know, to be you know unbelievably intelligent or unbelievably wealthy, or like every single day I'm gonna have you know smoke coming out of my asshole or something like something special about me. And there's nothing special about me other than I think I'm a nice guy, right? And and so so I think that that's the the thing that sometimes uh, I don't like about the celebrity part is that. Dude, it's like like I I'm just Anthony, the guy you see on TV. I'm just I'm just that guy, and um, I like like this year I haven't shot a lot of TV, and I really like more than you can ever imagine. I've said this before on the podcast, just kind of normalizing my life a little bit. Right? Yeah, it must have been an interesting um, you know uh, journey for you to have such 
a change when you just went to being somebody that worked in hotels and was finding success in that to all of a sudden walking down the street and people know who you are on a regular basis. You, you, you know, and it, 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 yeah, that was interesting. Um, did I ever tell you the first time I was, I was, uh, um, what's the word? Recognized. Recognized. Yeah. There you go. See, I can't See, even. All the, I'm whipping out those word. fancy words again. <laughs> Never tell you the first time I was recognized. No, sir. Uh, Rockefeller Center. Uh-huh. I'm coming out from getting my shoes shined, uh, which is the best shoe shine in the world in Rockefeller Center. Coming up, and uh, a woman. I'm walking right in front of Radio City Music Hall. And it was when all the commercials were on TV for travel channels for Hotel Impossible. And like I was more famous from the commercials in the beginning than the shows because the shows weren't airing yet. But it was the night the show was going to air. And the commercials were ridiculous. 24 hours, seven days a week on HDTV, DIY, Hotel Impossible, uh, uh, Food Network, Travel Channel. They were running Hotel Impossible right. commercials. So I was already famous before the show aired. So I'm walking up. No one's ever recognized me before. And this young lady, uh, she must have been like, I don't know, 27, 28 years old. She's walking past me. She's about 50, 15 feet away from me. She points, right. she points at me. And she goes, I know you. And without skipping a beat, I put my hand up and I point at her and I go, I know you. And we both smile at each other. And she looked at me like, you don't know me. I was like, yes, I do. And I just walked past her. And it, it, it almost threw up because it was re- really weird. But then, like, the music went off in my head. And, like, I just literally walked into it. Right. I really felt like I walked into a cloud. And, like, okay, everything from here on in is going to smell and taste different. And I'll be honest with you, it has. Yeah. Every, everything was just a little bit different um, from that moment on. And I'm very blessed and, and appreciative of it. But anyway, w- let's talk about you. What was your 2018 like? I was afraid you were going to get back to that. Um, you know, 2018 was uh, was, was great, and, and I, I feel I want to talk a little bit about it from that career point of view because mm-hmm. we are ostensibly a, a show that helps people find their way. Hey, use a fancy word, and um, you know, getting people to have confidence in themselves to to do well. Now, I always like to put everything through the prism of the fact that now, as of January first, second, it's been three years since I left a full time job to start my own business and what that journey has been like for me. The year before I left was filled with sheer panic as I was planning to do it. The first entire year was um, trying to find a level of confidence and trying to find a level of success. But this third year has been um, learning about uh, trusting myself and my instincts and knowing that if it feels right, you know, we did that whole episode on trust your gut to really live that way, to trust in yourself, to have that confidence that you are doing the right thing, even when other people may not see it that way. But also adjust when you sense it as well. That's right. It's like not just dig down and just go no. tunnel vision. It's like make adjustments. Never dig down. Down And the, the fact is that you have to be flexible, and I think that's one of the things that I also learned this year. I may have had a vision for way, the way this company that I'm creating was going to go three years ago, but it's changed, right? I've seen what works. I've seen what isn't being as effective, and I'm able to pivot appropriately in order to take that journey. So while I um, have confidence in myself, I continue to be open to change. I continue to be open to new relationships and new opportunities and never shut down anything. And, and how many times do you do things gratis to ensure that your company continues to grow? How many times have you got on a plane for free? How many times have you done something complimentary because you think something else is going to come down the road and more times than not, maybe it hasn't worked out or maybe it has worked out Well, because that's important for a pe- person starting a business is agreed. you do the right thing because it's the right thing to do, not um, because you're trying to get something, right. right? So so eventually you may get something from it, but just do the right thing and your business will work out. Right. And it goes back to what I used to, uh, what I used to tell my wife years ago um, when I was really still starting my career and trying to get everybody to know who I was and being in the mix. And she'd be like, why are you at a cocktail party again? It's like the fourth one this week or, you know, this, you're out every single night. You're doing this, you're doing that. You should be, you shouldn't be doing that. And she's like, what did you get out of that event tonight? And I'm like, nothing. But maybe in five years from now, somebody I met at this event, it will pay off. And I've really had my entire vision of my career that whole way. If you put yourself out there, if you're open, if you're kind, if you're generous with your time and you do stuff for free, the, you know, I'm not a religious guy, but I do think there's some sort of interconnectivity in this universe. And that karma thing, I think is right. right. And I think, but I also think there's a very important part because I, I've probably spoken at eight to 10 colleges this year and I do them for free. Right. 
And but there's also that um, you have to be careful because then people think you're cheap, and, or people think that okay, I can take advantage of them. So I've been very careful. Like I'll do colleges for free, but I won't do anything else for free. Right. And the reason being is because then people start taking advantage of it. And I, I've noticed that because a couple of times I've done a couple of things for, for some organizations or and then because they come through a friend. Right. And I get taken advantage of. And I'm like, I'm never going to do that again. Right. And so, so you have to be careful in your business. Not specifically, I'm not talking to you, but speaking to the audience, is there's times when you do it. And it's times when you just don't do it, and some, you know, and and you dig down, and you know, your time is valuable, and you know, when when I go to speak a speaking engagement, I'm relatively expensive, but not because I'm maybe better than anybody else. I think I'm good at it, but I don't know if I'm the best in the world at it. But my time, I have no time. So the more, the less time you have, the more money you make, right? Um, to to show up. So there's a, there's a fine line between you know being accommodating. And also, hopefully, that something comes of it. Right. And then also, people take advantage of you because right. as my, one of my favorite lines, and I hate this line, and, and but it's true: no good deed goes unpunished. That's very true. Um, but at the same time, I don't want all of you thinking out there. Um, you know, how do you find that balance between doing what you feel is right and not being taken advantage of? Can I tell you how? Please immediately identify their level of asshole. Right. So my asshole meter is always in my pocket, and I immediately understand. And I, I won't talk about there's one person this year that took advantage of me. Uh, I got paid, mm-hmm. um, uh, but I thought it was a really good fee right. until I realized what they started to do to me once I got there. Right. And I'm not a complainer, so I just went along with it. 19 hours later, I got on a plane. I was just like, oh, I'll never do that again. They can't pay me enough money because they just took advantage of me. Right. And that's so much took advantage of me, my time, just the way they treated me. I didn't like the way they treated me. They treated me like um, a commodity and like I was this thing to be uh, just squeezed every ounce and every second I was there to, to basically utilize me for their benefit and without treating me like a human being. And I went along with it because I'm a nice guy. Um, but um, I was like, I'll never do that again. All right, good. Uh, first of all, I'm relieved because I thought you were going to start talking about this guy that keeps taking breakfast from me. So <laughs> I'm just glad <laughs> that you're not talking about me. But yeah, I, I totally get where you're you're coming from on that. And having that, you know, your asshole meter has really got to be in, in tune and understanding. And you are going to make mistakes. Even you, Anthony, you as you just shared, still make those every mistakes, single, right? Every single, my, every single day of my life. And it's also, you know, being people always mistake people's kind not always but a lot of times mistake their kindness for weakness right and that's the biggest problem people have with me and you'll learn real quick when somebody if you're taking advantage of me and you're you're taking my uh, kindness for weakness um again two or three things will happen one i'll call you on it immediately right two i won't call you on it i'll walk away and you'll never see me again um or three i'll do a combination of both yeah, right. That's a it, that's that's really interesting. And, uh, you know, and to to fold it back into the lessons that I learned this year, um, I probably could have done less stuff for free. But I've been at the point where, if in doubt, just do it for free because maybe I'll get some marketing out of it or something. I'll get some sort of value out of it. I did one event. I was um, as a favor for somebody, and I had to fly a long way to do it. And um, I'm not necessarily sure I got out of it what I was hoping to directly, but indirectly, it's starting to open up some they other appreciate doors it, for me. Yes, they okay. definitely appreciated it, but I, I don't know. To me, to me, 90% of the battle is do you appreciate it? Right. Like even if I don't get anything out of it, just do you respect what I did? You don't have to make a big deal of it, but just, just show appreciation for what I did, and that's all I want. I don't want anything else. And I, I think the biggest thing that I learned all of this year, because I'm good with doing the uh, with, with this stuff for free, but it's having confidence in the rates that you charge. And this has been an issue for me for my entire life. Um, the whole idea, we don't talk about money enough in this society. It's almost like, you know, like sex and drugs is kind of like in this other category where we're, everyone's thinking about it, right. everyone's doing these things, but nobody's talking about right. it. So as I've evolved over my career and trying to find myself in the last few years and figure out what should I be charging for this, I had to go through a whole psychological exercise. And it took a long time to get there over charging what 
my value is opposed to what I perceive my worth to be. Because we all, I think, in this human experience, value ourselves less than other people might value us. And I'd rather charge more for something and negotiate myself down or lose the opportunity at this point than feel as if I've been taken advantage of Mm -hmm. for charging less. And as I've been making deals throughout this last year for speaking gigs, advertising, or whatever, I've lost some opportunities but I've slept better at night because I know that I haven't sold myself. Yeah, I've walked away from 90% of my opportunity simply because either time or I just didn't think the, the money was worth it. Not that, listen, a dollar is important. Every, every dollar is important, but you have to make those time, you know, those, those, those time decisions. You know, is it worth my time to do that, to get on the plane? So, you know, it really, and it really depends on the people, the way they approach me. But if you get an agent, agent is good and bad, right? I have an agent. And uh, on one hand, they do negotiate better than I can negotiate Absolutely. because they're, you know, when they do it all day long. Um, number two, uh, agents don't bring you business. You know, you bring them to the business and they negotiate the contract. So I've learned that the hard way. That's true. Um, but um, I have one instant where I, uh, I said to the person, hey, um, go through me and it'll be, you don't have to go through my agent. And they gave me a number, and I was like, I was insulted by it just because right. it was a ridiculous number. And my agent got on the phone with them and literally got me six times the number. Wow, six times the number that they quoted me. So um, yeah, we we never we're never we're never as good as uh, a, a third a third party. But it, it is it's about standing up for yourself. It's knowing your value and having little wins. The reason you start getting more expensive, the, st- the reason you start getting more confidence, is because you have wins. That's right. You don't get confidence by losing, ah. right? <laughs> you you learn by losing, but you don't get confidence. It's so by funny it. you should say that because uh, you know my job on this podcast, my other podcast, my speaking engagements is to sound positive, right? Is to always have the up, have a lot of energy behind me but I'm not like that necessarily everyone thinks I am but if I don't get those wins I take it really personally well, let's talk about that for a second because I whether it be you or other people it's like we all have ups and downs right, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but if you look at things like I was I was had a lot of gratitude yesterday right I it was New Year's Day my dad died on New Year's Day 52 years ago so it's a tough day for me it's, I always go through kind of like this 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 day of I'm left alone nobody bothers right. me and I just have my own day and I go wherever my thoughts take me and um I was thinking about right how much gratitude I had mm-hmm. and if you think about the house you live in and the family you have and what you get to do for a living and how you looked at in the industry uh, and you look at how this very complicated uh, computer, which we call a body, right. functions, you know, as far as I know, you're not ill, I'm not ill. Um, like, there's so much gratitude that I have. And, and I think that's really important when you look back at 2018 is we have ups and downs. You make money, you lose money, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, it's like we're still ahead of 99% of the people That's right. uh, in the world. That's right. It's just because you have your health you know, and you can afford to pay your mortgage. And I think that that um, really, to me, when I get in my, my dark moments, um, I, just, I, I just have too much gratitude to stay there too long. Agreed. Everything's and, temporary. And uh, let me bring in a, uh, a very poignant uh, fish lyric <laughs> at this point. I'm so excited. I know. Uh, everything's right, so just hold tight. Right? I mean, I everything's think that's, right. Just everything's hold tight. right, so just hold tight. All right, tight, can, I, can, right? I, can, can, but, can I, can I, just for, has nothing to do with what we're talking about, can I tell you my favorite yeah. lyric from a song? I do want to hear Fiona that. Fiona Apple. Yeah? Don't pull my trigger and blame my gun. Right. <laughs> My favorite lyric of a song ever. Yeah, that's it's awesome. it's so true, right? Yeah. It's like, why are you so pissed off? Well, you just pulled the trigger. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is my personality. My attitude depends on you. And I, I, I learned that from that lyric anyway. So yeah. you can learn something from music. So no, but it, it's true. I, I, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of lyrics that I think that really help inform me and stuff like that. But the truth is everything is all right because we have our health. I have good family. And any of these career stumbles that I might have, they're not even stumbles. They're just what normally happens. It's usually we're in our own way. Right. right? And we all we, we have this, no matter how much you try not to keep up with the Joneses, as much as, as much as you try not to say, well, that person has this and that person has this. Like if I look at someone... Uh, that has, like, at one point I had three television shows right. on air, right? At one point I had no television shows on air. 
Now, I look at my friends that sometimes have one, sometimes I have four. You know, Andrew Zimmerman had four at one time. And you look at it like, oh, my God, I only have one. Or right now I'm not filming, he has three. And it's like, who gives a shit? It's like, really? Is that what is that what my life comes down to? When I die, five seconds before I die, am I going to be thinking about Andrew had four and I had three, or I had zero and he had two, or whatever it is. It's like, so we get so caught up in status, yep. and we get so caught up in that, that as I go forward, as I get older, and I think it's an age thing, it's, there's three things I want. I want health, I want my family to be happy, and I want enough money to make sure that nobody's worried about money. Right. And if you have those three things, what else do you want in this world? Yeah. Well, there is really nothing else. I'm not a guy that needs material items, right? I mean, there are certain things that I want, but It would be nice if you get a couple of nice shirts once in a while. I, you don't like this? I got this at Old Davy. <laughs> I, like, like you know, <laughs> I actually like that Brooklyn, New York. T- this one I just bought. I, I like it. Uh, it's great. It's, uh, you know, I, it recalls my, uh, my, my Brooklyn lifestyle. I just had to replace my other Brooklyn sweatshirt, and I'll give a free, uh, uh, free ad boost to uh, Brooklyn Industries. Great quality products over there. The other one I had lasted, I don't know, like 10 plus years. Really? And it finally just got too stretched out, and I needed to get a, a new cozy sweatshirt. Everyone's better for no that. I, right? Aren't they? Okay. So since you're really not talking about your 2018 outside of a couple of... Uh, well, I am things, talking about but, my right, 2018. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a question. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to ask you two questions. Well, actually, one question and you're going to give me two answers. All right. All right we, should I now pretend we're on the Extraordinary the biggest, Podcast? The, the biggest... Dis- yeah. <laughs> Oh, my. <laughs> Good thing no one can see what gesture was just made my way. <laughs> <laughs> it was a finger. <laughs> it was in the middle of my hand. Yes. Um, your biggest achievement in 2018 and your biggest disappointment. My biggest achievement is getting this show up and running, honestly. Um, I, you know, I don't want to sound like a kiss ass, but for me to make um, a strong connection with somebody that – I admired and was a celebrity well, that wanted to work with me and to create something that's real is pretty freaking awesome. What's your biggest point? Thank you very much. What's your biggest appointment? Um, I don't think that I put enough effort into getting um, more public speaking engagements. And I know it is something that I can achieve if I put some more work into it. And I also think that I could have done better on a few other little things, but I'm trying not to beat myself up. On, on a that. scale of 1 to 10, what's your lazy factor? I think it's an 11. Okay. I always joke around that I'm a type C personality masquerading as a type A personality. <laughs> and everybody thinks I'm a type A personality, but I just want to eat a sandwich and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I know you pretty well now, right. so I get that. Yes. I know you personally. <laughs> I completely get that. But what's, what's interesting is I, I, like, I'm a type A personality. Mm-hmm. But what I'm realizing is people say to me, um, I, I, a couple of years ago, somebody said, I, 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 somebody was doing a predictive index right. on me. And they said, you, your energy comes from other people. It's not a self-sustained energy. Yes, you need other people right. for energy. It's like, absolutely not, dude. I am so self-sustaining. I, my energy is at my level all the time. I don't right. need other people. And then I realize, oh, shit. It's completely right. motivated by other people's energy. I'm completely that person where, where left to my own devices, I want to say I'm going to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I have something to do or I'm around other people... I'm a lunatic. Yeah. I have more energy than any That's right. nine-year-old on cotton candy in a room, mm-hmm. right? So it's interesting. <laughs> I don't know if I'm quite the um, uh, C personality and A personality, but I get that. And I think people have to understand that most people are intuitively lazy. Right. And it's how to manage that laziness. Because people that are always up, and they, they get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, they go to the gym. Then they do this, and then they do that, and then they do this. And then by 12 o'clock at night, they're like, all right, one more thing, and then they go to sleep. I don't trust those kind of people. Right. Those tra- people scare me. Those people are too agenda-driven. They're, they're, they're searching for something, or they're running from something that's scary to me. Mm-hmm. I think I'm a balance of I want to achieve, mm-hmm. But I don't want to be uncomfortable. Right. Like when I watch people work out, like uh, if they're working out for two or three hours and they're just just grinding, grinding and grinding, grinding. Like I don't want to be that uncomfortable every day of my life. Like I go to the gym, I do what's comfortable and I go home. Mm-hmm. 
and I eat a sandwich and go to sleep right. or whatever. <laughs> but but I think that that's one of the things that we're people have to really understand about themselves is being lazy is okay. Being unproductive is not okay. And somehow in between the two, you have to figure it out, right? Like, you know, I watched my daughters this break uh, on their phones. And I'm like, okay, they're in college. They got a lot going on or whatever. But then they went like a full day. I don't think they came off their phone all day long. It's like, I don't think that's good. No. I don't think being on your phone for 10 hours straight with crap that doesn't matter is good, even if it's a down day and even if it's during the holidays, I don't think that's good. So on one hand, I don't think being lazy all day is good, but I don't think being driven all day until 12 o'clock at night and driving yourself, because I don't think those people last very long. I, I just don't. I, yeah, I, it's, I just don't think it's a healthy way to live myself. But for me, it is a constant struggle against um, getting that momentum going. So I have the inertia to keep being successful over a long period of time. As we're recording here on January 2nd, I kind of had a nice week and a half of kind of slowness. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit hard to get going now because I'm in that state of I don't want to do anything ever again. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, it's easy to get me kickstarted. It's hard to get me slow down right like i can kickstart easily and go but getting slowed down um is, is, is hard and i get bored really easy and i get antsy really easy um so you know i always try to manage both you know it's yeah. it's, it's 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 really uh my biggest achievement i would like to think in the last couple of years is to be able to manage having time with my children and also being very busy and i've worked really really hard at it right so um so that's 2018 what so how about the world what the hell happened in 2018 in the world? Uh, a lot happened in 2018 in the world, but we're already almost 40 minutes into this show, yeah. so I'm wondering if we should just save that for another episode at this point. Um, uh, honestly, Anthony, I think that we've got a lot of great content here, and I, I think that we've both been open and honest, and hopefully some of the things that we've spoken about today will help our listeners today to understand that the struggles that they're having, the challenges that they're having, are the same ones that both you and I have been facing. Right. Um, when you look at... Yeah. People on TV. Let's take the Kardashian people, for example. Oh, yeah. Right. And the people, are like, they can roll their eyes. They can get sick to their stomach. At the end of the day, I don't like the Kardashian show. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I like, and I don't know, I don't like what they stand for when it comes to glamour and right. sex and all that stuff. But the one thing you can't deny them is how hard they work. Agreed. Because people, oh, they don't work. They just, they're on TV. And they're, right. You know how hard it is to be on TV? It's really freaking hard. But at the end of the day, when you look at any of the Kardashians, when they go to the bathroom, they take a shower, they're not feeling well, whatever they're doing in their life, they're just like you. Right. They're just like you. They just have maybe a cooler job than you. Maybe they make more money than you. But they have all the same problems and they're all the same disappointments and, 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 and all the depression or whatever that people carry with them. We're all just... We're all human. Yep. And I think we're all, and as I get older, I just give myself more of a break. You know, I'm not trying to impress anybody anymore. And I think at some point, um, you got to level out, you know, and it, as I'm getting older, I'm learning, um, I'm not chasing anymore. I'm more, I'll give you an example. I have a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. Jenna, she used to work with me at the at the Algonquin Hotel, and now she's Joe manager of a hotel in the city. And she's I always call Jenna's world because Jenna is in her own little world. Wonderful, wonderful young lady. She, she lives in Long Island City with her husband, and he's a Four Seasons guy. Worked right. for them for many years, and we hadn't all year we hadn't seen each other, and we always get together for drinks. And she texted me yesterday, and she goes Happy New Year, and I go Dude, 2019, we need to see each other. And she's like Okay, I said Next Wednesday. For drinks. She goes, yes. I said, great. That made my whole day. Yeah. Those little things make my day. It's like, I'm going to see a friend who I truly, like, at my de on my death, hopefully Jen will be in the front row. Like, right. and I haven't spoken to her all year. But, like, that to me is what I get enjoyment out of now. Like, somebody tells me, I get, like, we were just talking this off air. Somebody tells me, you know, Hotel Impossible is back in production. Okay. Right. That's great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm excited about it. That's fun. But okay, you tell me I'm having drinks with Janet. Yes, right. Like, like, like. I just I'm getting to the point where the real moments in the life and the the moments I have with my producers, the moments I have with my directors, the moments I have with Enrique, the sound guy, or or those are the moments I remember. 
Like those are the moments I, I appreciate it. Those the, the 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 one show we did where we went to a water park and I was kind of in a miserable mood because I was exhausted and everybody else was having fun. I remember sitting at this table by myself. My friend opened up the water park for us. Wow. It was two o'clock in the morning. We're at Ka- Ka- Kalahari. Kalahari Resort out in Ohio and everybody's having a ball. They're drinking. They opened the bar for us. Everybody's having a ball. I'm miserable. But I remember being happy for them. But I was just exhausted, and right. I had a stomach ache, and I didn't feel good. I think I even had a fever. I felt like shit. But I remember just watching them all act like six-year-olds, and I was like, wow. You know, we were able to do this because of the show. We were able to do this because of my friend. And like that, we were able to provide that for them, and, th- and that joy of mm-hmm. th- watching them all. Like, that's what gets me excited now. It's not so much, oh, it, you got this, or you got this, or you make this amount of money, or that amount of money. It's, and I still got to make money, right? got to support my family. But it's the, the interaction that we have, the, you know, the friendship that we're building. That's really what life is about, you know. It's about just those moments, and it's, I know it's cliche, but it's those moments. It's like have your quiet cup of tea in the morning, listen to music, you know, listen to fish, take a walk. Those are the things that matter. And in 2018, I kind of got back to that. I kind of got back to kind of just enjoying a slower, quieter me. My life's still busy, right. but I'm quieter. Yeah. I mean, if all of us could get away from the whole notion that things will make you happy, they don't. It's about um, family. It's I will about, tell you, my, yeah. my brand new Volvo is making me a little happy, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, know I, talk, I know I talk about it. It's the only thing materialistically that I actually, literally my entire life, that I look at and I'm like, I love this car. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I right. think where it's it starts... It's the only to, time it's ever happened. I no, think material things don't make me happy. Where it becomes wrong is when you utilize products and brands to make yourself feel better as opposed to them being reflection of who you already are and the confidence that you have in yourself. And if you want to judge somebody, right? This is how, to me, I judge people. It's very shallow, but I do. If somebody says, hey, uh, you know, um, I got to go get my car out of the valet. If you have a Mercedes, 99% of people say, hey, I have to get my Mercedes. Right. Fuck you. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, like, why are you saying I have to get my Mercedes? Right. It's like, I talk about my Volvo because I love my Volvo, but Volvo is not like a Mercedes, like it's a name thing, right? It's a Volvo. Like, people look at you like an old man. I don't care. I love that car. But it's like most people that have, like, those kind of real fancy cars, Mm -hmm. like, I'm going to get my Volvo. I don't care. Just go go and get your car. And we've got to get away from that. We've got to get away from, uh, in 2018, there's so much chaos. There was so much chaos and so much anger and so much hatred and so much bigotry and racism and sexism and... Just, you know, we have to have a Me Too movement. We have to have all these movements because people just don't know how to fucking behave, you know? And I, I'm i just sick of it, man. It's just like, just just stay in your lane. Yep. Stay in your lane, bro. Yeah, I, I, I agree. So <laughs> I think, personally speaking, 2018, we both had really good years. And I think that I hope every one of you out there, if you didn't have a great 2018 in 2019, Try not to take everything so seriously. Focus more on yourself, on how you can find that uh, spirituality within you. And I don't mean, you know, God will do this for me. I mean finding that inner strength to, to acknowledge what your demons are, find a way to not be lazy, and find a way to get out there and make those achievements so you can feel really great about yourself one year but, from now. And, and remember that it all changes like that it in does. a snap you know i i 11 weeks ago i was on a ladder and mm-hmm. i fell 10 feet and broke my ankle right okay who cares mm-hmm. um i i work on it i get my ankle stronger and i don't really think about it outside of you know like right now as i'm talking to you i'm moving my foot to get my ankle cir- the circulation but my point being is that could have ended my life that right. moment literally the doctor said 50 percent of people fall that far die um, and, and, and the rest are usually, you know, in a wheelchair or something. So like, so 2018 will come down to, to that moment for me that everything was going great. I'm fly- I just, I just flew from Europe. I, I was having a great week. Right. Everybody's happy. Things are good. Making money. Life couldn't be better. And all of a sudden I'm in an emergency room, get my ankle worked on. And it could have been my morgue. I could have been in the morgue. I could have yeah. been dead. 
So I and I live my life that way that anything could be taken away from me tomorrow in a second. So it just 2018 will come down to the moment that I made a mistake and got on a ladder when I shouldn't have and I fell off and broke my ankle and that could have ended my life. So I really going in 2019 it just it, it, it underscores even more that life is a precious precious commodity. Yeah, and thanks for not dying cuz I'm really just getting into loving to do the show. <laughs> you, know, you know this is exactly what would have happened in your head. Yeah. Uh, so you get a call, you see it on Facebook or whatever and say, Hey, Anthony Mercury passed away. The first thing you're like, fuck the podcast. Yeah. Oh shit. You died. Yeah. Oh, right. When's the funeral? Yeah. All right. Well, I, <laughs> uh, there you go. People and, are selfish, bro. People are. And it's, and the funny thing is it, it's like, it's probably exactly how it would have gotten down. And it doesn't mean that I don't think you're an amazing person and I don't value that we have a real friendship now. But it's like, I really like this podcast. Fuck. Right. But, yeah. But I, I think that, you know, instinctually we have all of these thoughts within us and we have to be able to control them. Well, when, and, when Anthony Bourdain all. passed away this year, right? Right. People felt bad for Anthony Bourdain, but everybody you heard, everybody I heard, all they talked about was like, "I love that show. Right. I love watching that show. Right. You know, there was a moment um, all year. Every single person I spoke to about Anthony Bourdain, the only person that I saw really break down about Anthony and his family was Samantha Brown. Right. We were having lunch, and she broke down about his family. And about him as a human, and like it was like it was like the first time I saw somebody really care about the human side of it, and not oh what 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 I don't have anymore. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so yeah. so so listen, people are, are selfish, and if you can be a little less selfish, and I'll try to be a little less selfish this year going to 2019. That's what life's about, man. It's not about yep. taking, it's about giving. It sure is. And uh, before before we start to uh, wrap up, I want to thank the Garden City Hotel for being such great partners with us in 2018. We're actually recording from their hotel right now. Uh, great experience out here in Nassau County and Garden City, uh, Long Island. Love being at this hotel. And I, I, I love that this is a relationship that we've been able to create with them um, that they allow us to come here and do this. You know, we, I, I, I drove up this morning. It was uh, eight th- uh, 9 o'clock when I got here. And the valet gentleman came right out, wished me a happy new year. There was a gentleman washing uh, the front door, polishing the brass. Uh, there was a young lady in the, at, at the front desk as I walked in. She, she greeted me with a smile. And it was really like the little perfect hotel in my brain that I think about all the time. It's like what a hotel looks like in the morning when I pull up. And it was like, oh, my God, the little perfect hotel. And I looked across the street, and it's like such a beautiful little area. Anyway, it was just I, I, the more I stay here, the more I like it. And be sure to come visit us over here at the Garden City Hotel sometime. It's a great, uh, great location. I know they're going to take great care of you. So, but, Anthony. And, and just text me before you ask me that question. Uh-huh. And, and just text us. If you want to come and watch us do this podcast, we'd be happy. There's yeah. one, two, three, four, five. I love that. There's six chairs here. So uh, we can fill them up with little butts. Yeah, little big we, butts. we sure can. Find us. Uh, you can find me at Traveling Glenn Online or him at. You can uh, find me uh, at Anthony Hotels anywhere you want to be on the Internet. Yeah. And please find my other podcast called Extraordinary where we interview incredible people, everybody from the commissioner of the Transit Authority to uh, Heather Hardy, a world champion, to the gentleman who founded Black Tap, and just uh, some of my friends who I found very, very interesting. So, um, and we have a very big surprise guest coming on very, very soon. Yes, we do. And uh, But uh, more important than that, Anthony, I want to know, tell me something that I don't know. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, what you okay? Well, you know, but they don't know. And yeah. you, okay, okay. That's fine. It's and I hate talking about it because people are going to think I'm a degenerate. But you know, I have a poker thing, right? You do. So yesterday, it, it, the anniversary of my dad's uh, passing away, 51 years, and I went to the cemetery and I drove right from the cemetery. Uh, found myself at the Borgata at a poker tournament because um, uh, I was kind of in a melancholy mood. And poker tournaments make me happy. And I went and did a $100 buy-in to a poker tournament and lasted uh, all the way to the third person. So I came in uh, third Amazing. In, in the poker tournament at the Borgata. It was the first time I cashed at a, at a tournament. And I won $1,000. Awesome. Happy guy. Congratulations, man. Yeah. So tell me something I don't know. Uh, okay. What's well, something you can't know? I can't handle the pressure of New Year's Eve. I think it is. I don't uh, think anybody can it's anymore. It's too much pressure. It's, uh, you know, where are you going to be? What are you going to do? You have to have plans, 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 plans. 
So um, I gave myself up in the uh, the 1990s to stop worrying about New Year's Eve because I couldn't handle it. And I just went to see uh, fish shows every year for New Year's Eve and you, do the you holiday know, run. You know, it's interesting. I think you're in a majority, not a minority. I think most people just gave it up. Yeah. Because I think you're right. It's the pressure. I've never, because my again, my dad passed away in New Year's, so I don't, I'm not a New Year's guy. Um, I take that day to just kind of chill. And the, the one hard and uh, fast rule in my house is no one goes out on New Year's Eve. The right. family is together. Right. It's, it's, the, it's the anniversary. Actually, my uh, mother-in-law and father-in-law got married on New Year's Eve. And, wow. she, and my mother-in-law is no longer with us. So it's about being with grandpa. It's about being with the family. It's about just being together. And no one. I don't care if my kids are 90. Right. New Year's Eve, everybody's together. And that's kind of the, the, the way that we've framed our life. Ever since um, I got married and had children, um, it's all been about just being home on New Year's right. Eve. You, you're still like a, do you still like every day yeah. think that someone actually fell in love with you, married you, and bore your children? Uh, no, no. She, uh, she married me for my money. Then she realized I had no <laughs> <laughs> My wife did the same thing. <laughs> And then I asked her for ten thousand dollars before we got married, and yeah. she's like, "You got no money." I said, "I was broke." <laughs> no, broke as uh, honestly, I just think she married me so I could pay off her college loans. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it was great, two thousand eighteen. Um, yep. This is our. I know we usually don't date our shows, but I want to date this show because the it's the first uh, show of two thousand nineteen. But we were talking about two thousand eighteen, and then we're going to talk about two thousand nineteen on the next show. But um, truly, uh, thank you for the opportunity to to be your partner, your friend, and uh, your podcast partner. Yeah, man. Thank you so. Much. Much. I absolutely uh, love doing this show with you. And uh, one thing I really love is having all of you listening to us twice a week, wherever you get your podcast. Oh, you know what we didn't do? Um, oh, you didn't ask questions? Well, you find uh, questions from our fans. Uh, no, I'm not a question. I promised, uh, you know, because we promised people that anytime they gave a five star rating. Oh, we got five star uh, rating? We got several of them mm-hmm. over, the, uh, over the break. So I've got to um, pull this up. Well, you pull it up. I'm gonna get, I want us to think about one thing. Mm-hmm. In 2019, suck less than you did in 2018. Isn't, yeah. that, isn't that really like poignant? It absolutely is. I have is. a way with words, don't I? All right, here we go. All right, I lied. I couldn't really find it. I'm having a technical issue here right now, trying to pull up uh, iTunes. So Apple folks, if you're hearing from me right now, shame, shame. Uh, next episode, though, I make sure that we have your comments. I want to be able to show to, as we promised, to read all those great five-star reviews that we've been getting from each and every one of you. Until we come back next time, talk all about what we see in ahead of us in 2019. I want to thank you all for checking in. It's checking in with Anthony England, teaching you to be the hotelier that you want to be. It's checking in with Anthony and Glenn.